What's up, everybody? Go Burns! Celebrating the one-year anniversary of the Mafia 3 reveal trailer. It came out one year ago today, August 5th, 2015. And we're going to talk about your reactions and, of course, my reactions. And maybe even some things that have changed since the reveal trailer. And what we're looking forward to coming up in October when Mafia 3 arrives on Xbox One, PlayStation 4, and PC. And if you want to check out my Mafia playlist, it is up here in the comment section. So, first off, my reaction, my thoughts to Mafia 3. I was really, really excited about it being set in New Orleans because I am from Louisiana even though up in the northwest corner of Louisiana, more like East Texas, even though I'm you know, kind of a child of both states, Texas and Louisiana. But still, I have frequented to New Orleans a few times in my day. I love that city. I love the atmosphere in the French Quarter. I love hanging out in the middle of a jazz bar, having a nice drink on a lovely evening. It's just good times in New Orleans. It's a great city, has a lot of historic value to it. And one of the things I knew is that they weren't going to call it New Orleans. Like with uh, the first two Mafia games, they were going to use a fictional name to the city. Now, at the time, we didn't know that the city was going to be called New Mordeaux. In the uh, reveal trailer breakdown I did a year ago today, I you know, theorized that maybe they'd call it, say, Crescent City or New France or New Paris. Hey, I got it half right. I got the new part right, right? So, But honestly, New Bordeaux is a great name just like Lost Heaven for the first Mafia game and Empire Bay for uh, Mafia 2. So fantastic name choices by Hangar 13 concerning Mafia 3. All right, so the next thing is obviously I really love the setting. New Orleans, the late 60s with the muscle cars, the uh, whole historic events that are happening in this period, Vietnam, civil rights, LBJ, one of the most crooked presidents we've had so far in the White House. The music was fantastic. The counterculture going on. 1968 definitely is a perfect time. And New Orleans is a perfect place for a third mafia setting. And I was very happy to see the return of Vito Scaletta. Of course, the protagonist from Mafia 2. Because everybody loves Vito if you played Mafia 2 when it came out back in 2010. And that was another thing that I was really jacked about. The fact that after five years of waiting... We knew that we were finally going to get a sequel to Mafia 2. Of course, we had to wait a year later because at the time, we knew it was coming out in 2016. At least we were hoping it was going to come out in 2016, but we didn't know exactly when. We speculated maybe if we were lucky, the spring or the summer, and worst case scenario, sometime in the fall. And obviously we know now it's October 7th. That's when it's coming in just about two months from now. So, yes, I'm excited for the main protagonist as well. That was my feeling at the time one year ago today, and you guys can go check that out yourself to confirm that I'm not lying. I'm not making this up. Because, unfortunately, Lincoln Clay got a lot of hate when he was first introduced a year ago. And that's sad in this day and age that, you know, he had hate, he had a lot of negativity regarding Lincoln Clay's character. And I realize it's a mafia game, and a lot of people wanted Mafia 3 to be a continuation of the Mafia franchise, where you're in the Mafia and you deal with your story within the Mafia, moving up the ranks and everything else that transpires, similar to what happened in the first Mafia game and, of course, in uh, Mafia 2 of Vito Scaletta. But this is going to be different. It still involves the Mafia, obviously. But the Mafia, led by Sal Marcano, is the enemy, the main antagonist, of Mafia 3. So the things I really liked about Lincoln Clay was the fact that you could really connect to him at least in one way, maybe several ways, depending on your own life. You know, he was an orphan, mixed race, in a time when that was really frowned upon. There was a lot of racism back in the 1960s. And of course, he was always looking for somewhere to belong. He uh, was a Vietnam veteran and of course, a member of the Black Mob. And uh, of course, the idea uh, bringing these three people together, you know, Lincoln along with Burke and Cassandra, Vito from three different lives, you know, bringing them together under one common cause, one common enemy, the Marcano crime family, you know, Burke being of Irish descent, Cassandra, Haitian, Vito, Italian or Sicily, 
because, you know, he was born in Sicily. But the point is, it's just the idea that you could bring all these different people together and find a common cause and purpose and create a new family. And that was what Mafia 3 is going to be about. You know, family isn't who you're born with. It's who you die for. So let's talk about your reactions to Mafia 3 when you first watched the reveal trailer one year ago. Now, Adrian over on Twitter said he cried. And of course, I wanted to go into more specifics because those could be tears of joy or you could be like, <laughs> I wanted to be something else. I wanted to be in Vegas. Even though Vegas would be a really good setting for a future Mafia game. Maybe even in the 70s. That'd be kind of cool. But of course, he, he loved it. His response, of course, is, yes, of course. I was so happy after waiting five years for Mafia 3. And then waking up to the reveal trailer, it was an amazing day. And I agree entirely, Adrian. And of course, uh, Brian Smith his reply was, my first thought was I had to change my pants. <laughs> uh, hey, hey, whatever floats your boat, Brian, you know, we all have our interests, right? So <laughs> had to go clean yourself up a little after that, right? <laughs> See, Adrian, he likes to cry. Well, Brian, you know, he did something else. But anyways, uh, Bailey Stout's reaction <laughs> was this. <laughs> And I'm sure that was probably a lot of people's reaction as well. So thanks for your reaction, Bailey. <laughs> All right, so we're now moving over to uh, the YouTube reactions from you guys. By the way, if you didn't get a chance to chime in regarding your reaction to the reveal trailer when it aired a year ago today, feel free and leave it below in the comment section. I'd really like to see how you reacted personally to the announcement of Mafia 3 when it was revealed August 5th, 2015. Of course, we're going to start with LANYC. I was actually pissed. At first, I was like, isn't this mafia? I mean, what's up with the black protagonist? And this is coming from a black dude. And I think it's not necessarily a racist reaction from people. Now, some of them, unfortunately, are racist. That's a sad reality we have to deal with. But I think a lot of it was simply the knee-jerk reaction, expectation, because of the mafia franchise. You weren't expecting the protagonist to be, you know, of mixed race, half black and half white, even though my reaction was obviously, and I'm not lying, I'm not joking, I'm not making this up, I mean, I've, I was one of the few that actually liked the concept of Lincoln Clay being mixed race from the very beginning, because I just, I don't know, I just like that idea, I just think it's really cool, it's a different spin on the Mafiaverse, and, uh, but yeah, I'm sure a lot of people felt that way as well, it didn't really matter if you were black or white or, or anyone else, I mean, if you were a Mafia fan, L-A-N-Y-C. I mean, you weren't expecting the next protagonist of the Mafia franchise to be Lincoln Clay. But at the same time, I feel like L-A-N-Y-C and many others have been turned around on that knee-jerk reaction and feel quite differently about Lincoln Clay now. I think he's going to be a great protagonist because I just like the idea of Lincoln Clay in general. But anyway, so anyways, they had a little discussion there. We're going to move on to the next reaction from the sedan 57 Chevy. When I first watched that trailer, I got chills down in my spine. I felt my hair stand on end. I felt like I was going home. It oozed style and atmosphere and told a compelling story. Even though it was only a couple minutes long, the dialogue written was on point and it was just so well done. It showed that everyone in my family, they are going to actually ask me when the movie was coming out. And then they saw it was Mafia 3. And then they understood why I was a grown man jumping up and down, <laughs> dressed in a suit, and smiling like an idiot. Lincoln Clay became my family on that day, and I felt so damn nice to know I finally had something to look forward to. And I think, you know, you speak for um, all of us Mafia fans, whether you're a Mafia fan from the beginning with the 2002 Lost Heaven game that came out on PC, or if you came in with uh, Mafia 2 in 2010, that you were just really excited to see a continuation of the Mafia story. The next uh, comment comes from CJ Ware. My thought was originally, immediately knowing that this was going to be a new turn for Mafia with a mixed protagonist, new environment, and returning characters. I was more hyped than ever to return to the Mafia universe and continue the story of Vito and of course, the story of Lincoln Clay. And by the way, a CJ Ware is also of mixed race, half black, half white, because I do talk to my subscribers, unlike some other YouTubers. So from that point of view, you know, we've had this discussion many a time, CJ Ware and me, that that was very important to him personally, because there's so many people out there that, you know, aren't, you know, black or aren't white or, or Hispanic. They're, they're somewhere in the middle. 
And a lot of times, because I've you know had a girlfriend like that once. She was half Hispanic, half white. And a lot of times she really didn't feel like she belonged. But the truth is, we all feel that way. It doesn't matter you know what our pigment happens to be because we all come from different you know life stories, different trials, different you know bad hands dealt our way, and we're all trying to find that purpose, that reason. You know, people that we could call family, just like with Lincoln Clay, and to rise above any adversity that we may have or whatever society deems as uh, a negative factor regarding especially back in the 1960s when it came to how bad race relations were back then and race relations are are better now than then but they still kind of have a long ways to go and hopefully one day we'll reach the point of star trek and we'll all look past our petty differences and we'll all realize that we're all humans which is what we are but sean said well my first reaction when i saw the reveal trailer was complete happiness because of how much I love the time period and the story and a different character for the Mafia series and touching on the black mob. It just gave so much excitement and happiness and the chop shop looks like, okay, he's talking about the chop shop. Okay. So anyways, there was a couple videos earlier this week. The, uh, let's see, Lincoln Clay case file as well as let's see what else came out. A new Bordeaux Tribune article and, uh, the Burke, uh, anarchy, uh, trailer all revolved around Burke and the chop shop. So that's why people were talking about chop shops here in the comments section. Okay, so let's see. Oh, Ted, Ted, uh, he wanted to uh, chime in as well, you know, about his reaction. A giant open world, and, you know, it's a new environment, it's a fresh start. And hopefully, Ted, Ted, unlike Empire Bay, which was a very beautiful city, it'll, New Bordeaux will actually be alive. Because, you know, Empire Bay, when you go back and you replay it, you know, great game, uh, going chapter to chapter. But in the middle, there's really nothing. It's a, it's a dead world for the most part. So I, I feel like Hangar 13 will learn their lessons from Mafia 2 and there'll actually be stuff to do, not just side quests or, you know, Playboy magazines to find in Mafia 3, but there'll actually be, you know, some sustenance to New Bordeaux. I mean, it's based off New Orleans for crying out loud, so it better. All right, so the next reaction came from Gold Thief Gaming. Honestly, when I first saw the announcement trailer, I couldn't tell whether Lincoln was African-American or not. And there's a reason why. It's because the cinematic trailer is a lot different than the gameplay trailer that we've seen over the past few months recently. When it came out in August a year ago today, the characters looked a lot different. Lincoln Clay looked a lot more like the actor that portrays him, a lighter skin, and uh, Vito looked way different. And of course, Cassandra looked a little different, and Burke looked different as well. So that's one of the things that video game companies employ to first tease a new game they're working on is uh, cinematic trailers. And unfortunately, the cinematic trailers rarely turn out to be exactly what the game is going to look like whenever they start actually rolling out real gameplay footage and uh, real trailers and real uh, cutscenes from the game itself. So there's an obvious reason why there may have been a bit of confusion there. But I had the feeling from the beginning that, you know, Lincoln Clay was going to, at the very least, because of his complexion, be of mixed race plus i think it was you know already written down somewhere in the description section of the video or in the uh, press release regarding mafia 3 but after re-watching it and the other trailers i figured it out and either way i'm so excited because mafia 2 was definitely in my top five games i ever played and i couldn't wait to see what happens to joe and that is definitely something that's going to be resolved in mafia 3 it's been mentioned by you know several people at hangar 13 that you know, we are going to get answers regarding Joe as to what exactly happened to him at the end of Mafia 2. Hopefully, there'll be answers that people will find satisfying. And of course, uh, Chance Alexander, this is what he said. I was really excited when the trailer came out. I love the setting that we get to see the operations of gangs that aren't part of the Irish or Italian mobs. And that's another interesting factor because in Mafia 2... Uh, you did have the Irish. They were one of the bad gangs you had to deal with as Vito, but throughout the Mafia franchise, it's been predominantly the Irish because that's where, you know, Mafia comes from. Italian, Sicily, you know, you get the idea. And a lot of people really get on my case about that because, I mean, Sicily is part of Italy, okay? It's part of Italy. That's like saying, yeah, yeah, something specifically Texas. I mean, yeah, as a Texan, you know, you have a little bit of pride being a Texan, but at the end of the day, you're also American, so... Anyways, a little rant there on my part, but yeah. So, I mean, Mafia is more of like of an umbrella description nowadays for any sort of criminal activity. And it doesn't really matter if you happen to be of uh, Italian or Irish or, um, let's see, Haitian or the black mob. 
in uh, Lincoln Clay's case when it comes to Sammy Robinson. So it'll be interesting to see how the operations work. And that's one thing I really like about Mafia 3 is the fact that that's one of the objectives. You go in, you tear down Sal Marcano's organization piece by piece, brick by brick. And you're basically rebuilding a new organization and you're having to decide who gets what territory, who's going to get the French Ward, River Row, uh, Control of the Bayou, for example, and of course Delray Hollow, etc. And of course, uh, the final uh, response comes from Giovanni. He says it was good. And yes, I agree, Giovanni. It was very, very good. I really much enjoyed the reveal trailer when it came out a year ago. I didn't like the idea that we were going to have to uh, wait a while before we learned more about Mafia 3 because there was a nice long uh, period between August and uh, April where we didn't really hear as much. There was some art stuff that was put out by Mafia, but that was pretty much it. And we just sat there waiting, our patience starting to run rather thin, mine included, admittedly. Just waiting. Okay, when are we going to get a trailer? When are we going to get some information about Mafia 3? And finally, they were ready to unload that information on us starting in April. And it's been, you know, kind of a you know big old ball of info rolling down the hill. Big snowball effect. And I know a lot of you have come to the channel because of my coverage for Mafia 3. And I thank you all for subscribing to the channel and following me on Twitter and liking me on Facebook. You guys are awesome, by the way. All of you, even if I don't interact with you in the um, comment section, because I realize not everybody leaves comments in my videos, and that's perfectly fine. But I just want to say that I really do appreciate each and every one of you for being part of the Go Burns Nation, whether you are leaving comments, liking my videos, or uh, retweeting my videos on Twitter, or simply just taking the time out of your day to watch the content that I produce. And I'm definitely excited for Mafia 3. And it's only about two months away, October 7th. And, you know, that's a lot closer than it was a year ago. And hopefully there won't be any delays. And hopefully it will be awesome. And let me know below in the comment section, what console are you planning on getting Mafia 3 on? Are you going to do uh, Xbox One, PlayStation 4, PC? I'm going to go with a PlayStation 4, not because I like the PS4 more than the Xbox One. I happen to have both. But for the uh, simple fact that I have more memory space available to me on the PlayStation 4 than I do the Xbox One currently. Unless I was to get an Xbox One S, which I don't think I will because the Scorpio is going to come out sometime next year. So what's the point, right? Anyways, Mafia 3 coming in just about two months from now. October 7th to Xbox One, PlayStation 4, and PC. Mm -hmm.